but at least one programming language you should have good command with. Why? Because let's say you know JavaScript, but the backend that you are going to write is in Python. So at least if uh, you see a logic and you want to convert that into a code, at least you should be able to convert that into a JavaScript code at least. And on top of Node.js, there are some really great frameworks like Fastify, Nest, which have been prepared to write very, very fast backend applications altogether. If you compare the metrics of Fastify with something like Spring Boot, you will be amazed that most of the benchmarks are going to be in favor of Fastify. And apart from that, Spring Boot has one very, very important factor. That is the adaptab adaptability in the big tech. If you see big tech companies like, let's say, Uber, if you see something like Salesforce, if you see something like LinkedIn, you see, uh, Amazon, Google, all of these companies either directly use Spring Boot or use some Spring Boot similar kind of like framework. Google, people don't use Spring Boot, but the frameworks inside Google specifically for Java. But if you go to a company like Salesforce, in Salesforce, Spring Boot is used like heavily directly, right? If you're starting your backend engineering journey, so should you pick a tech stack like Node.js and on top of Node.js pick something like Express or you would like to go with something like Java and Spring Boot or maybe you want to explore some other options like Go or Python or Ruby. This is a very general question and a lot of people do get confused and trust me a lot of students spend a lot of time figuring out which should be the tech stack that they should start learning with. So in this particular video, I'll put some really simple, straightforward and to the point pointers in front of you that what should, what is my opinion? If I have to start again learning backend engineering, what is something that I will definitely try to pick first and what will be the course of action that I will try to take? This video is going to be a short, short solution for your confusion. If you have a similar type of a confusion that should I start with Node, Java, Go and whatnot. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you are if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead. And we are going to put some really good content around tech, career, a lot of problem solving, etc. on this channel. So without any further ado, let's just start. So before moving forward in the video, I have an important announcement for you. So if you're somebody who is actually willing to learn advanced backend technologies, then this is going to be the right platform for you. So at AlgoCamp, we have launched our new flagship Lambda 4.0 Advanced Live Backend Development Batch in which you are going to learn advanced backend technologies including Fastify, ExpressJS, AWS, Mongo, DynamoDB and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course in which we are going to take you from the very scratch, very basics of backend technologies to the very advanced level by building a lot of interesting projects. We are going to build projects like Code Sandbox Clone. We are going to build streaming app, which, which will include recorded movie streaming plus live streaming as well. We are going to make applications like Booking.com backend, which is going to help you understand transactional capabilities, integrations of payment gateways and many more. All the important projects that we are going to cover in the course is going to be listed here. And this is going to be an absolute live course where we are going to take live classes Right. And in these live classes, we are going to do hands on coding experience to learn all the important advanced backend technologies. You already know that backend is something that every important application needs and you can actually excel your software engineering career with these backend tech in the Node.js stack. So what are you waiting for? All the important links, the complete syllabus, curriculum, all the details of the course is present in the description section below. You can use the coupon code coming up here to get maximum discount off on the current price. I'm really excited for the course. I hope you guys are too. And now let's get back to the video. Now, before choosing a tech stack and starting your journey with any development, be it backend, be it frontend, I believe there are a few prerequisites that you always should keep in mind and you should always try to complete first. First is problem solving. Whenever you are going to work on a complex project or let's say you want to start a journey with development, there will be a lot of interesting problems and challenges that will come up. In most of the scenarios, you will land up in a situation where you will be having a logic and you will have to convert that logic into a code, right? Now converting logic into a code, if you want to be very sophisticated and very, uh, I would say strong in this particular, I would say domain, then your problem solving skills should be as good as possible. Now, when I say problem solving skills, I'm not expecting you to be a great competitive programmer, but definitely I'm expecting you to have some basic and good data structures and algorithmic skills. 
if you know what data structures are, if you know which data structure should be used in what kind of places, if you're able to code your data structures on your own, if you're able to do some algorithmic problem solving, this actually helps you in order to do the development aspects very easily. Because whenever you read somebody else's code, you will be able to understand that code very easily. Most of the time when you see DSA problems, it's like what, 50 to 60 lines of code max. But in a very big project when you have to, let's say, do some backend or frontend stuff, then there will be probably millions of lines of code. At that point of time, your problem solving skills and your code reading skills are going to be something that is going to be most important. So if you practice DSA well, if you have good basic problem solving uh, abilities and you have a good problem solving instincts, then probably you are ready with most of the development aspect. Now, apart from this, you should have a good command on any one language. That language can be C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, whatever you want. But at least one programming language you should have good command with. Why? Because let's say you know JavaScript, but the backend that you are going to write is in Python. So at least if uh, you see a logic and you want to convert that into a code, at least you should be able to convert that into a JavaScript code at least. And then all you have to do is just do the language translation. You have to just see, okay, whatever you were doing in JavaScript in a certain way, how you have to do that in Ruby, right? And slowly and steadily, you will build up a command on Ruby as well. So this knowing one particular language in depth is very important and having a problem solving instinct and a problem solving ability is very, very important. Once you have both of these things sorted, now you can answer the million dollar question. What is the tech stack that you should always get started with? And if let's say you are now in 2025, what should be the tech stack that you should pick up in order to make sure that you are right on point, you are relevant for the industry and you are able to make some interesting, nice, impactful projects. Now, let's start answering the question, what tech stack you should pick? I believe any tech stack you pick, it's not going to matter a lot. If you ask my experience, the first backend engineering tech stack that I had and what I learned was Ruby on Rails. Nowadays, you will not find a lot of people focusing on Ruby on Rails, but my agenda was not to learn Ruby on Rails because this is going to give me a lot of job opportunities or something. I learned Ruby on Rails first because it was simple. Second, because I felt that Ruby as a language is very easy for me to learn. Why? Because I already had context with Java and Python. And if you see the syntax of Ruby, it's very much related to that of Python. Okay. So with these things in mind, and I read one simple thing that if you work with Ruby on Rails, then, then the overall developer productivity is very high. With all these two, three points in mind, I started learning Ruby on Rails. And throughout my career, I got an opportunity to not just work on Ruby on Rails, but also work on other tech stacks like Java. In Java, I work with Spring Boot, Restly, that's a LinkedIn based framework. I work with C++ based backend, I work with Python based backend, C Sharp based backend and whatnot. Interestingly, at any point of time, I didn't face a lot of friction. All I had to do was whatever concepts I learned back then when I was learning Ruby on Rails and Ruby, I tried to map those concepts with a new tech stack. 90% of the time, you will be doing a similar thing. Let's say you learn things in Java and Spring Boot. But let's say you got a job where everything is being done in C Sharp and .NET. So it's not like you have to learn everything from scratch. Most of the concept that you have already learned will be easily translatable in the new tech stack altogether. So whatever tech stack you are learning, try to make sure that you go as in depth as possible because having a deep knowledge of one tech stack will help you a lot in migrating to the other tech stack. Now, keeping all of these things in mind, if I am in 2025 and if I have all the knowledge and the context, what should be the tech stack that I would like to go for? To be very honest, I will straightforward pick something like Node.js. Why? Because of the dependency on the language JavaScript, Node.js becomes a very wise and simple choice. Why? JavaScript is being adopted by a lot of companies, a lot of startups. Most of the time, if you are in a tier 2 or a tier 3 college, there might be a chance that you will uh, not get direct calls from big fang and MNCs and big tech companies. So probably you would like to start your career with a startup, right? Even I started my career by interning at a couple of startups. Now, in startups, what you want as a, I would say, CTO or a founder of a startup, you would like to hire engineers who can get onboarded very easily and can work on as many things as possible. So you would like to hire an engineer who can work maybe on sometimes on the front end also, sometimes on the back end also. If you have a mobile app, then maybe if he, if he or she has to contribute to the mobile app, then they are able to do that also. Now, if you see a tech stack that is capable of doing all of these different different type of work, you will eventually land up at JavaScript. So JavaScript is so versatile and because of Node.js being so performant specifically for IO related tasks, Node.js becomes a very straightforward and good choice if you are starting to learn backend. 
Apart from that, it's very simple to get started with Node.js because the frameworks on top of Node.js like Express doesn't come with a lot of baggage. It's not very opinionated. It gives you complete flexibility to write code the way you want. If you compare this with other frameworks like Spring Boot, Ruby on Rails, Django, in these other frameworks, they have a lot of baggage. They force you to do things in a certain way. They don't provide you enough flexibility when you compare that with a Node.js based tech stack. This is a very important part. Apart from that, you would like to pick a tech stack which is easy to learn and you get enough resources for that to learn also. Now think about it like this. If you will start learning, let's say backend in something like Rust, you will find X number of tutorials for Rust. But if you see the same comparison with Node.js, then you will definitely find 10x amount of resources to learn for Node.js. What this helps you with is, you get ample number of options to learn from. When you're learning and you're stuck, you get a very good community support. If you see answers on Node.js and JavaScript based questions on Stack Overflow, it's humongously high. So you get unblocked fast. Apart from that, a lot of people around you will, must be already learning Node.js. We'll see a lot of people know Node.js. It's not like everybody knows Node.js, so I should know something else. It's, it should not be thought in that way. What you should try to think is that, okay, if I have enough peers who know Node.js, then if I'm stuck at any point of time, if I am solving a very complex problem, I will be able to discuss and get opinions from others also because they have context about the tech stack. This is something very important. And apart from that, Node.js is very performant. If you see under the hood, Node.js use the V8 engine, Node.js use LibUV, and Node.js provides you a lot of flexibility. These internal tools like V8 engine, LibUV provides a lot of performance enhancement, a lot of performance improvements to Node.js. And on top of Node.js, there are some really great frameworks like Fastify, Nest, which have been prepared to write very, very fast backend applications altogether. If you compare the metrics of Fastify with something like Spring Boot, you will be amazed that most of the benchmarks are going to be in favor of Fastify. So you are able to write easy code. You don't have a lot of baggage. You don't have a lot of restrictions. You have very good community support. You have enough number of jobs to get started with. And the overall learning curve is also not that steep. All of this together makes Node.js a very wise choice altogether. And apart from that, if you know Node.js, you will be having a strong command on JavaScript, which will eventually help you to, let's say, if you want to move to a front-end, web front-end role or a mobile front-end role, any kind of these kind of roles, you will be able to do that. And a lot of companies do initially definitely work on Node.js, so you will also get enough working opportunities also with Node.js. Now, this is completely my opinion. This is what I feel. But let's say, JavaScript is something that is not your strong suit. A lot of people don't feel a lot comfortable with JavaScript, probably because they have not give, taken an enough deep dive and they are more comfortable with some other tech stack. For example, a lot of people do DSA in Java or let's say some, someone is coming from Android related background where they mostly worked with Java. In those scenarios, transitioning to a new language might be slightly difficult. If that is your case, that means you are not a clean slate. You already have some context. Like let's say you are coming from the world of C++, you are coming from the world of Java, right? You already have some context on some other language apart from JavaScript. Then in that case, I believe a straightforward choice for you should be Spring Boot. Why? Because Spring Boot is based on Java. That means you need to have context about types. JavaScript doesn't enforce you to have enough number of types. You can use TypeScript with JavaScript to actually enforce types. But Java, C++, these are those kind of language that are going to enforce type safety for you. Right. I can see a lot of engineers coming up ahead who know how to write a code, but the moment you start migrating their code base to a more type safe environment, like something like Java or let's say TypeScript, they try to struggle a lot. People know React, but they don't uh, know how to write a React code with TypeScript. So introducing this type interfaces and type safety introduces and adds additional complexity. But if you're coming from the world of Java, if you have enough context about Java or something like C++ or C Sharp, it's not going to be that difficult for you. And apart from that, Spring Boot has one very, very important factor. That is the adaptab adaptability in the big tech. If you see big tech companies like, let's say, Uber, if you see something like Salesforce, if you see something like LinkedIn, see, uh, Amazon, Google, all of these companies either directly use Spring Boot or use some Spring Boot similar kind of like frameworks, right? For example, in Google, people don't use Spring Boot, but the frameworks inside Google specifically for Java is very similar and very, I would say, inspired from the concepts of Spring Boot. But if you go to a company like Salesforce, in Salesforce, Spring Boot is used like heavily directly, right? So Spring Boot is used in a lot of big tech companies. If let's say you are from tier one college, or let's say there are a lot of big tech companies coming onto your campus, 
then it probably makes sense for you to actually start with Spring Boot because probably you will be eventually working on Spring Boot also, right? If you see companies like Flipkart, they don't directly use Spring Boot, but in Flipkart, you will see a lot of teams using smaller and micro frameworks, but on top of Java, right? Again, that adds, uh, I would say, plus one pointer for Java. And if you see overall industry, at some point of time, most of the companies will be having one or two odd projects definitely in Java, right? There might be companies which will might not be having any project in Node, but there will be very less companies who have never introduced anything around with Java. If you see the payment infrastructures or if you see the payment related companies like PhonePay, Paytm, teams like Google Pay, if you see companies like Morgan Stanley, Goldman, all of these payment related companies and fintech related companies heavily rely on Java. Java has also a similar use case that there are a lot of good community support available. It's just that what I believe it can be completely open-ended that if you can do some X amount of work in 10 days in Node.js, that same amount of work probably will take 15 days in Java because there is a lot of overhead. You have to handle a lot of type related scenarios, right? The overall learning curve is not uh, that easy. It's a, it's a bit steep. You have to know a lot of things because Spring Boot is a very big framework altogether. It comes with a lot of baggage. It comes with a lot of conventions. You have to write the code in a very specific way. And there is one more problem that not a lot of people talk about, but that can be a problematic scenario for early stage engineers or I would say budding engineers or some people who are in, still in college. That is how to write a good clean code in Spring Boot. If you want to write good clean code in Spring Boot, you need to have a good context on low level design principles, solid principles, some design patterns. Otherwise, when you will see somebody else writing very nice code with Spring Boot, you will not be able to realize because you have never focused much on the object oriented paradigms or the solid principles altogether. You will find things a bit odd. For example, why do you create an interface for JPA repository? Why that JPA repository is also not a class? Like when you write your own repository and extend with JPA repository, why you create an interface? Why not create your own class? These kind of very, very simple questions can come to your mind. But all of these are very trivial questions for somebody who knows solid principles. So this added learning of knowing solid principles and LLD can make your learning of Spring Boot slightly a bit slow. But all of these packages doesn't come with JavaScript. Right. Why? Because in JavaScript, functions are the first class citizens. You can write everything with respect to functions and you don't have to bother around that. So this is my opinion that if you and if you talk about scalability, you can write scalable applications in Node also. You can write scalable applications with Java also. Both are extremely, extremely performant. If you're somebody who don't even want to go with JavaScript because maybe you don't like JavaScript and you find Java to be pretty obsolete and like pretty old, then the third opinion that I have is try to start with Go. There are a lot of companies who are migrating to Go. For example, Coinbase initially worked with Ruby on Rails and they are migrating their complete tech stack to Go, right? There are other companies like Shopee. There have been other companies who have migrated their tech stack from other frameworks like Python based frameworks or Java based frameworks to Go. Go is very performant. It's very easy to get started with. It's called as the modern day C, C++ kind of like language. If you are somebody who is coming to C++ world specifically, then migrating to Go will be very easy. If you see the code of Go and if you see the code of C and C++, you will find that, okay, Go is kind of like a better way to write C, C++. Go is very performant. It has some really interesting concept like Go routines, which can help you to write very uh, performant parallel processed code, right? If you have something that is going to be high CPU processing kind of like a scenario, Go can be your way to go for. There is a good amount of community support for Go as well. Of course, not as, as high as Node or Java, but there are good enough number of packages. What I believe is that the frameworks related to Go are yet to evolve a lot. There are a lot of companies, for example, Uber, for example, Coinbase, that do not use a direct end-to-end -end HTTP framework, but instead try to write everything in raw, plain, simple Go modules and simple Go packages. So the overall ecosystem has to yet evolve, but it is going to give you a very, very good performance uh, metrics and benchmarking altogether. So this can be a third option if you want to go for, but I believe still, if you are absolutely new, absolutely plain, plain state, go with Node. If you're somebody who is coming from the world of Java or similar kind of a type safe language, then, uh, and you are, let's say in tier one college and you are easily going to get an opportunity, for example, for a big tech, Maybe Spring Boot can be your way to go for. If you feel both are obsolete or you already know one and you want to get started with something new, something very performant, something which is very, very good for the emerging market, Go should be the opinion that you would like to go for. And that's it. This, these should be straightforward pointers that you can consider if you want to opt in for your next backend engineering tech stack.
If you have any other thoughts, any other opinions, do let me know in the comment section. I would be happy to answer all of them. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here and we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to talk about a lot of more things around tech and career. Till then, take care, bye-bye. I'm Sanket Singh, signing off.